गाइस फॉलो मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम टू नेवर एवर मिस एनी ऑफ माय क्रेजी अपडेट्स दिस इज द 190 द डब्ल्यू टू जीरो वन द प्रीडिसेसर टू द सी क्लास बट यू कैन कॉल इट द फर्स्ट जनरेशन ऑफ द सी क्लास दिस इज द सेकंड जनरेशन मॉडल दिस इज द थर्ड जनरेशन द डब्ल्यू टू जीरो थ्री विच वॉज एक्चुअली द फर्स्ट सी क्लास विच वॉज लॉन्च इन इंडिया द डब्ल्यू टू जीरो फोर माई पर्सनल फेवरेट बिकॉज इट कम्स विद अ सिक्स पॉइंट थ्री लीटर वी एड मोटर विच वॉज नेचुरली एस्पेटेड फॉर द सी सिक्सटी थ्री एम जी ऑफ कॉस एंड दिस इज द डब्ल्यू टू जीरो फाइव विच वॉज ऑन सेल एंड इज नाउ बिंग रिप्लेस बाई दिस वन द डब्ल्यू टू जीरो सिक्स C class. Now the thing is, uh, it is a mini S class. We are going to walk to our car. By the time I reach there, I want to tell you a few things. First and foremost, let me make it very clear. When I say regular C class, I mean the Avant Garde variant, which happens to be the C200 petrol and the C220 diesel. Because I am making a vlog of the C300D. So basically, the difference would be between the AMG line and the Avant Garde, which I am going to be talking because this happens to be the Mercedes C class C300D, the fifth. or the sixth generation of the C class depending on how you see the 190 model of course and straight away let me tell you it looks absolutely amazing but the problem is that it looks very much like other mercedes models so that differentiation is kind of gone straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay which means there's a lever somewhere here and there is the engine bay the C300D now the thing is with this generation of the C class it's only going to have four cylinder engines with mild hybrid tech and all variants are going to get mild hybrid or plug in hybrid you can see there's insulation right there the diesel engine is a bit noisy as well now the thing is with the amg line you get different bits like the grill is different of course so is the bumper there you can see the regular c class which is obviously going to sell more this c200d is going to be the most popular of course anyways there are parking sensors up front there's a provision for a camera but there is none mercedes logo is massive the grill is also different you can see the mercedes logo sort of a treatment the tri aero thingy take that tata motors and there is the mercedes benz logo here now the regular c class will not get the digital light these digital lights have 1.3 million micro mirrors resulting in 2.6 million pixels per car absolutely fantastic lights we have seen this first in the mercedes s class of course there are three main leds inside and then the micro mirrors ensure there's proper refraction to ensure absolutely amazing light quality at night this happens to be the indicator this is a drl and you know what it definitely looks like a mini s class but i'm kind of disappointed because when you see the a class you're like okay very similar sometimes it becomes little difficult to differentiate as well in terms of length it is longer by 65 mm the wheel base has increased by 25 mm the height is reduced the ground clearance is lower by 7 mm In fact, the C300D, the AMG line, is 15 mm lower to the ground when compared to the regular C class, and that's not all. There is also the fact that it is wider by 10 mm. Now, wheels are 18 inches here, 17 inch on the regular C class. Tire size happens to be 225, 45, 18s. You know, the wheels actually look small because of this treatment. Now, this might be similar to the one which you have seen on the E53. Says Mercedes Benz, they are on the brake caliper as well, and the parking sensor actually extends till there. In fact. Mercedes logo in the lights so lot of attention to detail it gets this gloss black mirror treatment which is not there on the regular C class of course and black colored roof which is there on the regular C class as well coming to the rear of the car Faisal Khan's fingers of truth really disappointed by fake stuff happening here i mean what is the need of this again what is the need of this fake exhaust the real one is actually on that side there's absolutely no need for Mercedes to do fake exhaust dual exhaust there you can see rear parking sensors says C300D now this is actually the fog light you get this split light pattern again very similar to other mercedes cars so in terms of uh, family design language it's good from a corporate perspective but from a consumer perspective all the cars are looking very similar which is not that great by the way the reverse parking camera is hidden here when you get into reverse it opens press this button and there the boot opens now the spare wheel is placed right on top which is again an ergonomic problem because yeah it eats up into the boot carrying capacity and then the boot floor is not flat warning triangle in fact there's some storage below isko kholne mein mushkil hogi kyunki pura nikalna padega anyways to open the rear seat or rather recline it you press a button and that happens yeah that's so easy just press this button there the seat reclines so it's a 60 40 split as well i just pull this okay there's a warning triangle or rather a reflector there on the top so as far as the design goes yes definitely it gives you the mini s class vibes to it Let's get to the rear where they say 21 mm increase in legroom. There is a sun blind here which is manually operated and let's just put this seat back into place. Seat belt pehle nikalni padegi yahan se. 
otherwise that gets stuck okay i honestly feel the recline angle you really have to pull the seat belt otherwise it just doesn't shut not that easy to operate ah obviously you get isofix child seat mounts and yeah there it is okay now the c300d is available in three colors white black and blue the regular c class that one that's available in six colors and three interior options it gets only two interior options the other happens to be the black burmester 3d surround sound system i believe storage space here this kind of looks floating which is nice and you get the pano black finishing nice leather treatment napa leather of course and when you get inside you realize yeah legroom has improved from before so as knee room scooped out seat back magazine holder but under thigh support is not that great in fact headroom isn't great for someone as tall as me and the recline angle of the seat could have been better ac vents have been placed here some amount of storage right there and below here what is there okay there is again some amount of storage which means where is the charging socket at the rear oh my god is that missing how did that happen now let's open the center armrest it has this sort of a pen holder and then you press it once again softly the cup holder is actually open this thing does not open there is a strap to you know secure your stuff and everyone gets a head because you get three adjustable headrests you get a sun blind which is electrically operated you get these dual split roofs as well and uh, this obviously brings in a lot of airiness but this one does not open you get a hook you get a handle you get light here as well height adjustable seat belts another hook you can adjust the headrest at the front very easily like this meanwhile the dashboard is a mercedes s class again fantastic looking dashboard really nice in terms of visual appeal for sure let's get out i'm a little disappointed with the rear seat to be honest but if they give too much rear seat space now you know what's going to happen people will not buy the e class by the way they have a long wheel based version of this car which is known as a v206 which is actually available in china and i don't think there are request sensors on the door so no keyless entry probably you can see the outside rear view mirrors in fact when you open the door at night it uh, lightens up mercedes benz here door pockets are big enough at the front this is to open the boot of the vehicle it says burmester here on the beautiful looking speakers these are the controls for the power windows outside rear view mirror adjustment this is to open or close the rear sun blind this is to lock the car this is to lock, unlock the car and you get memory seats you can save up to 3 people settings both the front seats are memory ones and this is electric adjust of course power adjust in fact if i press a button here i've saved stuff to my memory the good thing is that not only does your seat get saved even the steering position gets saved because the steering wheel is adjustable both for reach as well as rake electrically yeah so under thigh support is never an issue here because yeah you can adjust the under thigh support there you can see i'm actually taking it down and there i can increase the under thigh support to ensure there is no problem as such but for someone as tall as me yes under thigh support is still an issue you get these uh, pedals which have this sort of a chrome treatment some exposed bits here and there this is the electric parking brake of the vehicle this is the headlight control automatic headlights and this is obviously the ambient lighting you get a ton of ambient lights there you can see beautiful looking seat very comfortable night nice side bolstering as well once you step inside you realize that uh, interior looks absolutely fantastic this uh, treatment is a little different in the regular c class of course brings in so much light and this is sort of a touch operated thingy so i just swipe it and there opens the sunroof now it's a big enough roof to bring in a lot of airiness <laughs> inside the cabin especially uh, uh, okay that's about it it doesn't open any further especially when there are a lot of black stuff inside the cabin this is for the mic and here you get a light same as the case here as well you get a light okay here are a lot of controls now it gets mercedes me connected car tech so some of them are for the mercedes me connected car tech and this is obviously for the light yeah it's touch operated that's kind of nice auto dimming inside rear view mirror these vents are slightly different from what we see in the regular s class or rather whatever s class or maybach same vents they have the square shaped vent but like really nice quality beautiful piano black finishing around silver chrome very nicely done in fact the glove box has another compartment on the top it's a decent size but doesn't seem to be cool it can be locked as well meanwhile piano black finishing here now the s class actually gets a 12.8 inch oled screen this one gets a 11.9 inch lcd screen so slightly different in that regard but you really won't understand the difference between them very similar it uses similar software so after the s class and the maybach this is the one which gets the ntg7 system which is mostly touch operated so these are the controls for the climate control air conditioning here you can get into all the details info setting blah blah, blah. whatever we have seen in regular mercedes cars and then navigation has this 3d function as well which again looks very nice like the maps are super duper awesome 
Now coming to the comfort thingy, it doesn't get ventilated seats, it doesn't get seat heating either, but it does get seat kinetics, which is sort of a halfway massage, not the full thingy, which you usually get. Okay, you can see there's a lot of dust which is accumulated on the scre uh, screen, of course, and then you get ambient lighting. Here, you see there are 64 colors from the ambient lighting, and there's multicolor as well, so you can decide which kind of color, but the ambient light is not as bright as the one on the S-Class. That is another level or as such in terms of quality of lights. So yeah, that is the ambient lighting, and then you can get into info which shows you consumption vehicle and engine data, how much accelerator you're putting say there, how much power and torque in real time. So yeah, that's also kind of cool. The usual bits which you've seen in so many Mercedes cars now, so there's no point even going into it. But you know what? This is the camera. It doesn't get a front camera, but yeah, it has parking assistance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into camera views. This is the camera view. Here I have some multiple views for the same. Okay, there you can see that, but doesn't get a front parking camera, so doesn't get a 360 degree camera, it just gets a rear camera and 60 degree sort of parking sensors. Here are the buttons for the drive modes. This is to get into the car function. Here, if you want to get into manual shifting, whether you want to turn on and off ESP, this is the hazard light button. And this is the biometric sensor. Uh, when you put your fingerprint, you can actually uh, pair your settings and then save them lock so nobody can access it. Volume control here to turn on and off the screen right there. So easy to use as such and then obviously it's got voice commands as well hey mercedes how may i help you i love you i also love to spend time with you oh that's so generous of you so with voice commands you can do a lot of things air conditioning is a chiller it gets a dual zone climate control air conditioning system this is again a fingerprint magnet so we'll just leave our fingerprints and let me just open this here you get twin cup holders you can actually remove this and take it home if you so wish okay there's some storage space here there's a wireless charging pad it sort of seems cool and there's one usb-c charging socket because there's another one here there are two of them right there storage space is decent here sort of feels cool at the moment i don't know why okay and uh, like chrome and all that stuff this is the engine start button this is the stop start system ka button steering wheel gets this flat bottom treatment yeah it gets this flat bottom treatment really nice to hold but you know what this is like a haptic feedback touch sensitive thingy which is not as intuitive to use as that uh, you know knurled finish chrome buttons which were there earlier so this is obviously for this screen uh, i mean these buttons are for this screen these buttons are, i mean these row of buttons are for this screen uh, actually this is for cruise control here you can easily browse through and you can see it gets a lot of views as well so here i can go into understated we were already in understated and then you can change the colors also if you so wish sport one looks really very nice so again very similar to the one on the s class and then uh, yeah you get navigation while also this is actually fantastic Remind me of the S-Class for sure. And then there's a service display as well. Now, this is a 12.3 inch screen. This is 11.9 inch, like I already told you. A standard is 10.25 inch abroad. But here in India, we get these bigger screens as standard, which is amazing. The horn. Horn is actually nice. This is the guest selector. And this happens to be the controls for the wipers. Let's use the wipers right. Oh my God, the spray is so much. that even spray is here on the top. Now, let me do one thing. Let me keep this button pressed. No, 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 Faisal. It does not get the feature of cleaning the windscreen like that, which is there on the Mercedes S-Class. There's a handle to hold on to on the driver's side as well, which again is a nice touch. And then in this screen, you can browse through a lot of information. You never need to use this screen at all. But if you want, you can use this screen as well. Now, there's an issue with ergonomics because my left knee is actually hitting this part. So in the S-Class, I did not face this issue because that car is obviously wider. But here you can feel it. And like I told you, this is the button for electric adjust, both for reach as well as rake. Steering feels really nice to hold. But quality of plastics, not that great. Really hard amount of plastics lower down. On the upper side of the dashboard, obviously, you get this beautiful stitching and then soft materials as well. But lower down, scratchy plastic. Like I would expect better from Mercedes-Benz, but then obviously they have to come to a price point. But this car is not going to be cheap by any means of imagination. Here you can see this beautiful stitching which continues all the way. And Mercedes is written right there. It's written on the outside. It's actually reflecting on the dashboard at the moment. So yes, the dashboard design is fantastic. It gets a lot of wireless functions, wireless uh, CarPlay, wireless Android, auto connectivity too. But you know, it should have got more zones for the climate control, air conditioning, and our expected ventilated seats also at this price point. But everything else is very easy to use, very intuitive a screen. And then oh, you've got connected car, you've got voice command, you've got all that stuff. But honestly, it's a C300D. It's all about the driving experience. So let's start driving right away. All right, we are all set to go, which means first and foremost, we need to turn off the air conditioning and we shall get this into info. Okay. Meanwhile, I think the drive mode has to be sport, of course, getting into gear and uh yeah has a light off and no traffic around so let's go smoothly and there the parking sensors beeping and onto the throttle and off we go 
<laughs> Trust me on this. This road will not do justice to the power of this car, the performance of this car, because the road is just too narrow and small, and this car is just too powerful. So this is the Mercedes C Class, the C300D, making an overtake. Well, you have to plan it, even though you have so much power and torque, you have to still plan an overtake because of the blind curves. But that's not the point. The point is, this engine is very potent. Just to put it into perspective, zero to hundred kilometers per hour in just five point seven seconds, which is blisteringly quick. And at lower speed, you don't feel anything. Since we are in this boring mode of driving right now, with no, no, like you can't get on the throttle as such. What I'm going to do is going to talk about the hybrid motor. So it gets a 48 volt mild hybrid system and an integrated starter generator, and this results in better efficiency. So all variants of the C-Class now get this hybrid thingy going on for better fuel efficiency. And there's also a plug-in hybrid, the C300e, available globally, not in India yet. And there'll be a diesel as well with a plug-in hybrid resulting in some electric power but here you can't drive on pure electric mode as such overall what does it do it does multiple functions first and foremost this okay we got chance and off we go yeah baby this is what i'm talking about absolutely stunning the way this engine pulls so yes uh, this is a two liter four cylinder diesel engine oh god bumps can be felt you felt that huh? actually they were very bad bumps and you can't even spot them around the corners body roll is very well contained and the steering is also nice it's light at low speeds weighs up brilliantly at high speeds but mega kya problem ho you know it doesn't have the best feel feedback is good but doesn't have the best feel as such but steering is a nice unit very fluid and like i was telling you that uh, the hybrid system actually assists in a lot of things first and foremost that stop start system is there now it works better here you don't even realize when the car turns off and on because of the uh, 48 volt battery of course and also you get some amount of torque assist 20 horsepower more and 200 newton meters of torque extra because of this hybrid system and along with that you also get regenerative braking so when you're braking it puts in some amount of energy back into the battery resulting in that 20 horsepower being more useful like the battery is charged enough to give you that overall output is 265 horsepower and the torque output is 200 sorry it is actually 550 newton meters so that 550 plus 200 is equal to 750 newton meters it doesn't work that way because uh, both the engine as well as the electric motor do not produce th their peak output in uh, at the same rpm that's the reason i can just say 265 horsepower and 550 newton meters of torque with 20 horsepower and 200 newton meters assist at certain rpms mainly lower down that's the reason turbo lag is actually well contained because it takes care of the lower end of the rev range purely because we know it that the uh, electric motor obviously produces all its torque from 0 rpm the result is very punchy performance 0 to 100 km per hour in 5.7 seconds in fact very efficient as well clean mileage is 20.37 km per liter real world may in the city you will get somewhere between 10 to 14 km per liter out on the highway you can extend that from 13 to 18 km per liter 18 looks little unrealistic unless and until you drive very efficiently you can definitely get that and acceleration is like really bris mujhe pata bhi nahi chala ye cluster mode kab change aur kaise change ho gaya <laughs> so we just going to get back to our sport one which looks nice the horn the most important feature when you're driving on a ghat road is the horn of course here yeah, just going to get into vehicle data we just going to play around with stuff because we can so ride is actually quite nice the suspension is stone for comfort and you can feel that comfort levels are fantastic body roll is well contained steering is nice it's light at low speeds ways up could be better in terms of feel and yeah performance is absolutely fantastic now the gearbox is a 9 speed unit which is a torque converter which is decently quick which shifts and there i have paddle shifters as well yeah you can see slight bit of hesitation for an upshift let's do one thing let's change the cluster mode and let's get into classic here also let's change this to engine now it has got four drive modes on offer economy comfort sport and individual now in individual you can actually tweak few parameters which is the engine the steering and the esp system because obviously it does not get adaptive dampers it cannot get adaptive dampers because then the price will go higher as such The overall result is good balance between ride and handling a fantastically easy car to drive and this is based on the MRA platform which is the same platform as the older C class the only thing is they've heavily modified it is the Mercedes rear architecture platform rear wheel drive for the win come on yeah I kind of like the horn as well It's a fantastic car in terms of the way the luxury aspects have been taken care of inside this vehicle, and then we should just get into the navigation because that's really very nice here. So here you can see the navigation is so fantastic. I love the way the engine is very refined. It's only higher end of the rev range it gets vocal, but that's not important. What's important is that. This is a car which balances almost everything so beautifully well. First and foremost, the key is also new, so you can see the key is similar to the S class now. It's a nice looking key. Maybe a digital key would be really awesome, but then again, nobody in this segment really offers you that. So I'm kind of asking for too much. Am I not? All right. So what you're going to do is we're going to get into manual mode for the gearbox, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Off we go. 
it gets boomy around 4000 rpm red line comes in around 5000 rpm steering wheel is on the top position still i can't really see the tachometer so well yeah it will not hold on to a gear even if i try to tap the paddles no it will make an upshift it makes an upshift at 5000 rpm so this really means that the engine is very fast driving i think displacement has increased by 42 cc or something of that sort the same engine in a lower tune is then the c220d and we all know that the c220d is going to be the top seller of the mercedes c-class lineup that one produces 200 horsepower and all the engines obviously get that integrated starter generator thingy going on resulting in better fuel efficiency and that additional boost of 20 horsepower and 200 newton meters of torque now the petrol happens to be the c200 which uses a 1.5 liter engine and uh, all engines are going to be four cylinder including the c43 and the c63 so it's a fantastic car i didn't do an audio test so we're going to do that right away <laughs> Audio quality is actually very nice, huh? very nice audio quality, even though the radio is sucky, but still audio quality is very impressive here. And then I am actually thinking that the price of this car is going to exceed 70 lakhs for sure, around 72, 72 lakhs on road Mumbai, making it quite expensive and obviously prices are going higher, of course. The thing is, this car doesn't excel in terms of space. It doesn't even excel in terms of dynamic ability because it's not the spa most spacious car in the segment. It's not the most dynamic, which is still the most, uh, sorry, the BMW 3 Series is still the benchmark in terms of handling and then how can i forget this car is also not the most value for money in the segment which means that why would you buy a c-class simply because it is still the best all-rounder in the segment it offers you good amount of comfort luxury and all that but the c300d at around 72 lakhs makes me think that if i pay 7 8 lakh rupees more i will get the fantastic m340i which is actually the rival of the c43 why are car prices becoming so high all of a sudden well whatever but the point is that most people are going to buy the c220d which is fantastic which should come around 62 62 lakh rupees similar price as the bmw 3 series the 320d now of course being a mercedes it has got all those features which you would expect okay like active brake assist and the likes so all those safety features are there because i can see that uh, red triangle coming in the infotainment system so instrument cluster telling me beta samal ke aage koi gaadi hai so that obviously works well because mercedes was one of the first car makers to get this feature in india and they have really pioneered over time because now it works so flawlessly well as well now the thing is i'm going to get out of dynamic mode and i'm just going to get into comfort mode here i'm going to get into yeah where is this uh, settings okay now settings are a little different here we can just press the car button right there's a massive bump ground clearance is being lower when compared to the regular c-class the c200 and the c220d means by 15 mm it's sportier to drive but you have to be careful over bad bumps the car kind of does touch over bad bumps so you have to be careful there plus the suspension has been tuned more sportier here active brake assist is actually on uh, let's make it early yeah uh, there it is it is early so here onto the gas i can see that performance is slightly less eager when you get into this uh what in comfort mode and eco mode obviously it will be lesser the stop start system will become more active and depending on how much juice is there in the battery it can go on electric power but at lower speeds you don't know that but actually when you're cruising now it can go into gliding mode wherein the engine is like tata bye bye and the battery takes over just to make sure the car is cruising along and that's where you get better fuel efficiency in fact uh, the c220d is the most efficient mercedes model in india yeah that's right a fuel efficiency which is claimed to be 23 kilometers per liter okay ye bajai nahi. <laughs> yeah it's gone for a vacation Are, karke rakha maine early pe. it's not warning only <laughs> so uh, yeah function cannot be deactivated while driving i don't want to deactivate i want to activate it anyways guys this is my vlog of the mercedes c-class the new model it's a great all-rounder it doesn't excel in particular areas as such and i expected rear seat comfort to be better but then if that happens who's going to buy the e-class and the e-class is the only car now which is like between the traditional mercedes sedans which is kind of sticking out as the one which really needs some updates because yeah uh, <laughs> the older systems the horizontal screen in the center kind of feels dated now so next up is going to be the e-class and i can't wait to see what they do with it but yeah thoda differentiate karo gaadi sab gaadi waisi lagti hai to utna maza nahi aata ye dikha to raha hai mujhe awaaz nahi i don't know why and on that disappointment it's time to end thank you so much for watching if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's a like button i really like the way this thing has been done yaar matlab maps are like super duper awesome very beautiful hai. some of the tech inside this car is really amazing it's like next level stuff which mercedes benz has managed to achieve wow <laughs> we changed the cluster mode to sport baki sare modes actually sport kar chuke na to chalo ye navigation wala hi laga dete hain and we are going to get into sport mode here camera bhi on hi kar deta hu let's see what happens camera views dekhte hain kitni speed tak rehta hai left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor and off we go 
you can see that EQ Boost display 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 5.7 seconds is the real highlight for me. I really enjoy driving this car. Yeah, and then you have to really brake hard because bumps are there bad enough. But by the way, braking performance is also very nice, like very like super braking. So in most ways, this is a very comfortable, amazing, stupendous car. I just can't wait for the 663 AMG. Although I know it's going to have a lot more power, but then it's going to have electric assist and it's going to drop four cylinders, and that really hurts my heart. If you like this vlog, pata hai kya karna already bol chuka char panch bye. Bye bye. Iska wapis vlog karna padega because come on, I'm not being able to do justice to this car, which has a top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. By the way, the C220D has a top speed of 245 kilometers per hour. So surely this is restricted to 250. It can do a lot more than that. Engine is very potent. Some of the bumps here and there. Bye bye.